Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. The subject, Eat Here, which is the title of a book written by our guest, Brian Holwile, who is senior researcher at the World Watch Institute. And essentially, Brian, the thesis of your book is that eating locally is good for your health, it's good for farmers, and it's good for the planet. I mean, like, what's wrong going to the supermarket and getting a head of lettuce from, uh, from California? Well, the first reason that it's a problem is because it's not going to taste as good as the same head of lettuce grown by a farmer nearby. And then there's just a long list of, of problems that that lettuce brings, which we don't necessarily notice when we go into the supermarket and, and purchase it. Uh, for instance, a head of lettuce being shipped from California uh, to New York City, about 3,000 miles, consumes about 50 times as much energy, fossil fuels, in shipping as it provides in calories when you actually eat it. And by the time that lettuce gets shipped over to London, England, and a lot of California lettuce gets shipped by refrigerated plane to London, England, the energy bill is even higher. Uh, so we consume a tremendous amount of energy. Uh, the food loses freshness and taste in the shipping. It often needs to be fumigated, shrink-wrapped, and otherwise preserved. Uh, just to, to keep it uh, palatable by the time it arrives. Uh, and, and finally, we lose some sort of connection to where that, that food was raised. And this might seem like an abstract problem, but what that means is that the farmer growing lettuce and other vegetables in your area loses a market when you buy it from far away in California. And ultimately, uh, you have less control over that food because it's traveling thousands and thousands of miles. So eating local is really the most inspiring and encouraging change in the American diet today because finally it gives Americans some reason to be curious about how their food is raised. Now you and your wife, Sarah, I mean, you were actually the leaders in establishing the farmer's market in Sag Harbor. Just for tips for, for viewers who might want to establish a farmer's market in, in their town, village, or city, how'd you do it? The first step was speaking to farmers. Um, I was doing some food writing for a local paper. As a result, I met most of the farmers in the area and a lot of fishers, uh, fishermen as well. Uh, I'd spoken to a lot of bakers. I'd spoken to some cheese makers, some wineries. And uh, because my wife and I were interested in having a farmer's market in this area when we lived in New York City and Washington, D.C., we loved patronizing the farmers markets, uh, we simply felt the idea out with people. I asked the farmers I met, uh, would you be interested in selling at a farmers market? And um, you'd be surprised how many people uh, were interested but didn't necessarily have the time uh, or a person to spare to deliver food to the farmers market. Farmers are busy people. Growing food is, is a full-time job. Then getting to a market, market and selling the food is another job in itself. But once we had found uh, a dozen or so farmers and food businesses that were interested, that was the hardest step. Because then when we went to the village of Sag Harbor and proposed this, uh, there was virtually no opposition. Uh, and ironically, there was a bit of opposition from the local supermarket, uh, who I think was a, uh, and that does happen in areas where businesses feel, food businesses feel threatened by a farmer's market. The evidence actually shows that farmer's markets have a sort of halo effect. They bring customers to all the businesses near the farmer's market, including food businesses. And once we had the, the town on our side, it was very easy to get immediate public support for it. And uh, sort of the, the way it sort of works is once you build it, they will come. Uh, with fairly minimal advertising and, and press for the launch of the farmer's market, we had a superb turnout, and attendance has just grown every week since. You're a senior researcher at the World Watch Institute. What's the World Watch Institute, and what does a senior researcher do at the World Watch Institute? Uh, World Watch is an environmental research group. Uh, in the language of, of Washington, D.C., it's a think tank. Uh, we produce research. Uh, we're a publishing house, and we try to change the world uh, with information. Uh, we're different than a Greenpeace or a Sierra Club in the sense that we don't lobby. We don't do any direct activism or protest. Uh, we write articles, we write books, we put together policy papers uh, to inform the average person, to inform politicians, uh, to inform United Nations delegates and teachers, uh, to inform the public about what we see as important environmental trends. 
uh, to point out problems, but a very big part of our work is to point out solutions. And so uh, I got interested in the local food movement because I was doing a lot of research on what was happening to rural communities around the world. Uh, the fact that it was becoming harder and harder for farmers to make a living everywhere, not just in the United States, but in Brazil, in France, in China. And I saw a sort of positive silver lining to this decline in farmers around the world, and that was that, that where farmers were, were thriving, where farmers were still making do, was where they'd form some solidarity with consumers uh, through farmers markets, through local buying practices, and I stumbled on this local food movement. So it's a good example of how uh, we educate the public uh, about how, uh, the, what sorts of companies and, and communities um, are, are doing positive things that we think should be replicated elsewhere. You've been watching Enviro Close Up, and our subject has been Eat Here, and we've been speaking to the author of this new and important book, published by Norton, incidentally. Go buy a copy. If you'd like a copy of this or any Enviro Close Up program, just check out our website at envirovideo.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Carl Grossman.